We begin a new chapter, or module in our studies, as we turn our attention to the skeletal system, namely Module 6. If you are following along in my Human Anatomy and Physiology course, you may wish to go to our Learning Management System, that is, Canvas, and download the most recent version of the PowerPoint presentation from the modules link. This way, you can follow along and add your own notes or questions into the slides. There are 12 sections to Module 6. We will be covering the first six sections, which correspond to the first six learning outcomes in our PowerPoint presentation. For my Human Anatomy and Physiology students, you will not be responsible for the remaining sections in the lecture portion of our course, as you will be covering that material in the lab portion of the course. If you find the images and information from these sections in the textbook and or PowerPoint presentation slides helpful, you may wish to use the textbook and or slides to help you study for the laboratory portion of the course. I will leave the slides for Module 6.7 onward in the presentation, but I will not be testing you on those sections in lecture. I will only test you on material from the beginning of Module 6 up to and including Section 6.6. .6. Let's begin by introducing ourselves to the skeletal system, its major components, and its main function of supporting the weight of the body. The skeleton has numerous functions, but the most central function is supporting the weight of the body. We will explicate the other major functions of the skeletal system in detail in Module 6.1. But for now, in terms of its function in supporting the weight of the body, it is primarily the bones of the skeletal system that provide support. Bones have been described as being structures that are as strong as reinforced concrete, but considerably lighter. If you've ever poured concrete, you know how quickly it can set and harden, and once it has done so, it is nearly impossible to reshape or remodel. This is not the case with bones. Bones can be remodeled and reshaped in response to various pressures. For example, bones can be remodeled and reshaped in response to metabolic changes. For example, when certain nutrient levels are above or below normal levels in our blood, the bones can absorb or release their components to counteract such changes. This remodeling of bone is particularly noticeable when calcium levels in our blood fluctuate. Bones can also be remodeled and reshaped in response to changes in our patterns of activity. For example, when we practice weight resistance training, our bones become stronger. That is, our bodies invest energy into the growth and strengthening of our bones in response to the increased demands we put on them by our activities. Conversely, Inactivity can result in weakening of the bones, as decreases in our activity decrease the investment that our body puts into maintaining and strengthening bones. Bones also work with muscles to maintain body position and produce controlled and precise movements. With the skeleton to pull against, contracting muscles can make a sit, stand, walk, or run. Such muscles, because of their interactions and connections with the skeleton, are thus called skeletal muscles. We will look in more detail at the muscular system in Module 7. Periodically in the textbook, the authors include a Build Your Knowledge feature, which serves to immediately remind you of earlier material that will increase your comprehension and integration of new information. For example, here the authors remind us that bone is a supporting connective tissue, as you saw in Module 4.4. In particular, we saw in Module 4.4 that connective tissue can be divided into three major categories, namely one, connective tissue proper, two, fluid connective tissue, and three, supporting connective tissue. And, as was stated then, I will reiterate it now. Supporting connective tissues have a less diverse cell population than connective tissue proper, and a matrix of dense ground substance and closely packed fibers. This will be seen to be true for the various organs of the skeletal system. The body contains two supporting connective tissues, cartilage, and bone. The fibrous matrix of bone is said to be calcified because it contains mineral deposits, primarily calcium salts, that give the bone strength and rigidity. Finally, the skeletal system includes not only the bones of the skeleton, but also the cartilages, joints, ligaments, 
and other connective tissues that stabilize or connect the bones. Join me in Module 6.1 as we turn our attention to the five major functions of the skeletal system.